there's a hidden quality and a trait in you that makes the biggest difference in your ability to attract a great man who passionately pursues you, inspires you, and commits to you for life. But most women have no idea what it is. And what's worse is they unconsciously do the opposite of it, mistakenly thinking it's gonna get them what they want. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal what this trait is, what's prevented you from accessing it, and how you can harness it starting today and for the rest of your life. If you're watching this video, you're probably someone who wants to create a really deep, intimate connection that stands the test of time with an amazing man. If you're watching this video, you're probably also going through one of the situations. Maybe you've gone through lots of relationships back to back that are not what you're hoping for. Maybe they were painful, maybe they were abusive, maybe they were just mediocre in nature. And you're saying to yourself, I want more, I'm just not sure how to get it. Maybe you are someone who has been on the dating field for a while and keeps getting ghosted, keeps getting disrespected, keeps getting breadcrumbed by guys. You're trying to figure out why it's happening, but you can't figure it out. Maybe you're someone who is in the middle of a situation ship. You are with someone you feel deeply connected to, but knowing your heart of hearts, he's not the right guy for you. And I don't care how hard you try, you can't seem to cut the cord. And part of the reason you can't cut the cord is because you're afraid of being alone. You're afraid of having to go through years of hardship before somebody else connects with you. And part of your brain is saying, well, at least he's showing up. He's somewhat connected to you and he's validating you every now and then. Or maybe you're someone who is afraid of stepping into the dating field. You know you want to create a relationship, but you're not sure how to begin to create it. If any of those situations are true for you, then you're in the right place. And the first thing I'd like to say from the bottom of my heart is there is nothing wrong with you. And I'm talking to you specifically. Why am I saying this? Because there's so many women I've connected with throughout my entire career who have this notion or feeling, whether it's covert or overt, that there is something broken inside of them, that there's something flawed in them, that there's something that must be really, really wrong, or they would have been able to create this relationship. And what I'm here to say right now is that it's not your fault, although it is your responsibility to change it if you find that you want to create a relationship and it's not happening. And why am I saying it's not your fault is because you've gone through thousands and thousands of hours of schooling and learning, but potentially, if you're like most human beings, through zero hours of learning you know, how to create attraction, how to create great communication, how to deepen intimacy, how to sustain or have a relationship that stands the test of time. It's not surprising that if you haven't really learned the skills you need to create this relationship, and we now have such a high standard what a relationship is, that you're not getting what you want. So the first thing that needs to happen before I even reveal what this trait is, if you really want to have that trait be something you can step into, and not just be a video that you listen to find inspiration, but that your life doesn't change, is that you need to separate yourself from your behaviors. Because although there's nothing flawed or wrong in you, your behaviors might need some adjusting or changing. But when you can say to yourself, you know what, there's nothing broken in me, I just need to learn some skills, then you are far more likely to get what you want because if you're not making it personal, you just know that there's something you need to do. And why am I saying this? I'm not trying to pump up some false expectation or some false hope in you. I'm doing this being someone who's on the field with my hands in the dirt every single day of my life, helping women who have gone through seemingly everything, coaching, therapy, shamanic cleanses, yoga, law of attraction, books and podcasts, and they haven't been able to make the relationship work sometimes for their entire life. And we finally connect and I help them through a process. They learn some skills they hadn't learned before. They change their minds and lo and behold, they create the best relationship of their lives. So the first step that needs to happen is separate yourself from your behavior. The second thing that needs to happen is you need to step into real faith. And real faith isn't some imaginary hope about something happening potentially in the future as a self-help, empty, positive thinking mindset. Real faith is knowing. It's a knowing deep inside of you that when you're doing the right thing consciously, day in and day out, something is changing and something is revealing and opening for yourself. If I ask you the question, do you believe in gravity? You might think to yourself, well, that's a silly question. Whether I believe in gravity or not, doesn't matter. It exists and I can feel it right now. Well, that's the kind of faith that I invite you to step into if you want to create something magical out of this process and not just have this painful mechanism to catch a husband. My definition of faith aligns deeply to what the prolific and one-of-a-kind philosophers and poets called Rabindranath Tagore from India wrote before he died, which is faith is the bird that 
feels the light when the night is still dark. So what does that mean in this context? It means that you start feeling the gestation of this birth of this relationship, not just when it happens, but throughout the entire process. And when you do it that way, then you go from thinking that this is going to be the end all be all to knowing that there's going to be one more step in the journey that is far more complete when you enjoy the process, which is the third thing you need to do, which is to eliminate the illusion of arrival. So what does that mean? The illusion of arrival is this theory that most of us unconsciously live through, which says something along the lines of my life can be alone and can be somewhat sucky and maybe a little bit mediocre and maybe I'm not in love with my life. Maybe I even feel sad about the way things are going. And even though there's a super big cloud over me, when I finally meet the right person, the skies will open up and I will step into a meadow of the light filled with sunshines and rainbows and butterflies and even unicorns. And if there's a part of you, and it's not your fault if you believe this because every form of media shows you that that's the way, then I invite you to know that's not the way it works. If your life is sucky, your relationship will be sucky. Why? Because relationship is going to be what I call a magnifying experience, which means if your life is sad, it's gonna be a sad relationship. If your life is really angry and bitter, it's gonna be a sad and bitter relationship. If your life is great, connected, amazing, and you choose the right man, then it's going to be a great, amazing relationship. So the best way I have to express this is through poetry. There's a poem called Santiago by my favorite poet, David White, that talks about this part of the journey, enjoying the journey and not just the illusion of the destination, that you are more marvelous in your simple wish to find the way than the gilded roofs of any destination you could reach. Think about that for a second. My invitation for you today is that you do a quick reset and say, okay, I'm going to step into dating as a spiritual journey where it's not about the guy I get. It's not about the relationship I get. It's about the transformation I go through and the expansion of my happiness with a life that's full of meaning and purpose with someone who is in the same position of expanding that. So it's going to be one plus one equals 10, not half plus half equals one. Now, why did I spend so much time talking about that? Because if I just share what this trade is and you don't have that context and that mindset, then it's not going to make a difference or you're going to be chasing a shiny object. So what is the trait that makes you feel so much more compelling and magnetic, valuable to the right man? That is the commitment to shining your unique and self-expressed light. Your commitment to being unfiltered in the best part of you, shining what's uniquely yours, what's deep, what's passionate, what is actually an imprint of your soul shared with the outside world in a vulnerable, courageous, confident way. I'm going to make a little footnote right now to say that this thing that I'm sharing, becoming the most self-expressed, uniquely unfiltered version of you, is not something that you do to have men like you more. It's something that you do to make your life, as Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. Create an adventure out of your life. And when you do that, you will be far more attractive as a byproduct of your happiness, your greatness, your joy, your passion to the right man. Now, most people, when I've shared things of this nature on my previous videos, they come up with something super simplistic that is not what I'm talking about. They just write, yes, all you need to do is be yourself and the right guy will follow. No, that's not what I'm talking about. It is and it isn't. And here's why I'm chicken tongue saying it's not because you have different versions of yourself. There's a boring version of you. There's a cynical version of you. There's a selfish version of you. There's a pessimistic version of you. There is a version of you who doesn't have energy to do the right thing. So if that is the version of you that comes out to meet the world, you're going to be met with pain or crickets. If the version of you that comes out is the version of you that is confident, is the version of you that is full of life, is the version of you that is connected, really makes a difference for you, then that version of you stands a chance to create the connection she wants. Now, why wouldn't we all do this? If this is the trick, quote unquote, to get the most amazing connection, to stand out amongst an ocean of women who are looking for the same type of connection you're looking for, why don't most people do it? Well, simple, because of fear. There's two fears we all have as human beings that will never die as long as we're alive. And the fear is the fear of not being enough. And the second fear is the fear of not being loved. Now, these two fears are part of our psyche because these are what help us to survive when we are infants and they are built into our DNA. So we can work through them, we can make them less intense, but they always exist. So what happens when you feel and the world shows you that there's a version of 
humanity and it looks a certain way and it speaks a certain way that we should go for. Well, you're trying to chameleonize yourself into that version of you instead of expressing your uniqueness. When you do that, you push down what makes you unique and flavorful and amazing and passionate and different. And the right guy who's looking for that imprint, that version, that vibration of you cannot find you. They find this masked self that is not really you, but attempts to be you and they're not feeling it. So what I'm asking right now is that you take the courageous step and make the commitment today to take the mask, but take the mask in five specific ways. Now, I'm going to share with you, not just here's the thing, express yourself more fully. The question is how and what areas do you do this in? So I'm going to share five specific ways of doing this that can make it very practical for you. Instead of saying, I watched an inspirational video and I didn't do anything to change my life. That's not what this is about. I want you to start changing your life in a very specific way. There's a reason why beyond all the things I've shared, Many women can't get themselves to take the right action, create the right connection. That's because there's blind spots that are stopping you from expressing who you really are. Like Carl Jung once said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So my antidote to that is I've created a quiz having 13 years helping women to attract the relationship they want, even though they weren't able to do it before. And I put it together in something you can take in about 60 seconds. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first thing in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and within 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the elusive question, why you're still single. And a customer report is going to share based on your specific blind spot. What's the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Now, the first way you can make this very, very practical is in the gifts from your story. What makes you unique? The specific experiences you've had. But I'm going to go a step beyond and help you stand out even more. It's not just sure, here's what's happened in my life. Here's the situations that I've gone through. Here's the pain that I've suffered through. Here are the great experiences I've gone through. But there's so much more to you than that. There's the wisdom and the gifts that have come as a result of both the greatness and the pain, and especially the pain. If you stay at the level of, here's what I've suffered through, you can resonate as a vulnerable human being. If you can go a step beyond and say, here's what's happened, here are the gifts that I have been able to tap into as a result of that pain, not that you would wish that upon anyone, not that you would actually volunteer to go through again, but you understand that there's lessons and there's wisdom that comes from those experiences, even the painful ones, then the more unique you can be. Why? Because most human beings are stuck in the story. If you can go beyond the story and talk about the gifts and really step into them, not just talk about them, then you're standing out in a very specific, unique way that only you can stand out. Second way you can start standing out and become more of who you really are is to express more of your philosophy and your true values. There's things you believe about life, about the state of the world, along your spirituality. There's so many beautiful aspects of you that if you stop and take a step back and think about, you do have a philosophy around them, but you might have hidden that philosophy out of fear of being rejected. So the more you can freely talk about what you truly believe in, and I'm not talking when I talk about values, about the values that liberty and excitement and joy and love, if those are not things that you actually live into, those are not your values, those are your wishes. But what is it that you really are committed to that you can call your own, that you can say, I step into this value. The more you can express those in clear voice and in action, the more uniquely special and specific you'll stand out in the world of humans. The third thing that makes you more unique, and this is one that many women tend to hide away from, is your personality. You're not for everyone and you shouldn't be. But the more you go out and say, here's the thing that makes me me, I'm going to confidently state it into the world and the right guy will feel far more compelled to say yes to this every single day of the year and the wrong guy is going to self-disqualify and say, you're not for me, the more you can do that, the easier you will find it to have people who say hell yes to you or hell no, but not maybes all the time. If you're catching yourself with guys who are lukewarm, more likely than not, and you're half-assing your expression sometimes in your personality, be the authentic high version of you and let the chips fall where they may. The fourth specific area of focus, if you want to step into more of the uniqueness that you are, is in what you love and what you hate. What is your life about? What are the things that move you? What do you call sublime? What makes the little hairs on the back of your neck stand and what makes you feel yuck and a sense of nausea. When you're able to talk in clear terms, not trying to make anyone wrong for their beliefs, but speaking from the heart, speaking with conviction, sharing the things that are maybe sometimes pushed down, but if you were to express, more people will find you A, meaningful and B, connected to you. 
That's what I'm talking about. And the last area of focus, if you want to be more uniquely self-expressed, is your mission. What is your life about? What are you committed to? If you have one year to live, what would that year be about? When you turn 100 and look back, what do you wish you could say, this is what my life's purpose was? The more clear you are around that, your mission, your purpose, what you're here to do on this earth, the more likely you'll find human beings who are not just supporting you in your mission, but with similar missions that will uplift you and make your mission more possible. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me and my channel because this is the only way I can reach more women if you click like and subscribe. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulations, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.